Welcome back to Second and Short. It is Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. We had a great week. The NFL preseason started off this weekend. It was fantastic. A lot of great stuff. We're going to talk about that. We had an interesting weekend in the MLB. A um, little bit of a uh, little bit of minor league play, if you will. And um, also just a ton of stuff going on around the league. And then, of course, there's some NFL news, some big free agency signings now that we're into uh, the preseason. We've got the Big Ten preview this week, and then we'll round it out with Stake Your Claim. Colin, how you feeling? Feeling great, man. I'm ready to get into it. Yeah, just woke up from a little nap. Yeah, it was a, it was a <laughs> long day, but we're feeling energized. You know, we're get, smashing some caffeine. We're right here. We're locked in. All right, well, that's what I like to hear because we got an action-packed one for you, and it all starts with what I was referencing, saying there was a little minor league play. Wander Franco. <laughs> uh, okay, I probably should have prefaced with this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be sensitive about this topic. I know yeah. I'm going to make jokes. I already did. Um, yeah. But when it comes to you know what actually happened – it's still all alleged. There's really no, there, nobody has an idea of what actually happened other than the parties involved. So for now, uh, I'm, I'm making jokes. Yeah. I mean, you're not the only one. So don't feel like you don't feel like I just lost my train of thought. No, that's fine. But no, no. Yeah, dude. I'm seeing like memes left and right. Um, yeah. It's, it's hilarious, but it's just something that you just can't wrap your yeah. head around. Yeah, like the, the jokes are funny, but, you know, the story isn't. But l- let me get into the story. So uh, it started a couple of days ago. Some social media posts surfaced alleging that Wanda Franco is in a relationship with a 14-year-old girl in the Dominican Republic. Um, that day, or I think the next day, maybe, the Rays took him out of the lineup. And then Wander went on Instagram Live and denied the allegations. Same day, the Rays placed him on the restricted list, meaning that he will not be paid while he remains on there. And now the MLB is investigating, you know, just kind of doing their due diligence. The Rays said, that's totally fine. We get it. And now it's come out that the Attorney General of the Dominican Republic said that there is a complaint filed by a minor against Wander Franco, but according to the Attorney General of the Dominican Republic, it's a different young lady than the one that everybody's been seeing on social media because what was being brought up, <clears throat> excuse me, was that the girl that everybody kept showing was also shown driving, drinking alcohol, had a kid, and, and driving. You have to be 18 in the Dominican Republic to drive. You have to be 18 to drink as well. And the fact that she had, I think, like a three-year-old or four-year-old kid doesn't make a lot of sense if she's 14. Yeah. Stuff's just not, like, adding up when you look at it. Somebody's just trying to get some money. Maybe. But now we see that it's a different girl than who was being displayed that has a complaint filed and that makes it, uh, I I don't know. I don't, I don't want to like, I don't know, victim blame or anything like that, but it makes it seem like somebody caught wind of all this going on and was like, well, I'll just file a complaint. I am the, you know, somebody in the Dominican Republic that wants to make this claim whether it's valid or not. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, obviously, I don't know the truth. If this did happen, that's horrible. This shouldn't be happening. Yeah. If it, it, if it didn't happen, on the other end, this is bad and it shouldn't be happening because you're you're dragging Wander Franco through the dirt. Exactly. Like, cause <clears throat> It's just like, just imagine what that clubhouse is going to feel like when he returns. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it affects a guy's future. Yeah. But now, like like you said, we're not going to know until the investigation's done. So everybody's got their opinions on what's going on. Yeah. But I don't know. The dude, the dude was balling out, and it's a, it's a rough time for him to not be with his team, especially that 
they're so close with the Orioles. Yeah, the Rays are in quite a heated race. But nonetheless, hopefully, you know, whatever is the truth um, is settled with this. If Juan Franco did the wrong thing, he should be properly punished. If somebody else did, the same goes for them. So, um, yeah, hopefully everything gets resolved correctly, fairly, just everything with that. Um, but for now, let's move on. I'm going to start us off. I got a bunch of winners and losers, so I'm just going to hit the ground running. Um, we start with Bobby Witt Jr. My God, has this kid been on a tear. Like, absolutely ridiculous numbers he's been posting. So let's start since the start of June. In 62 games, he's batting 322 with a 364 on base and a 548 slugging. He's got 12 home runs, 17 stolen bases, 17.9% K percentage, and he recorded two infield hits and an inside-the-park home run the other day, which made him the first player since Juan Pierre in 2004 to do so. And on this inside-the-park home run, he recorded the fourth fastest home to home time tracked by Statcast with a 14.3 second time home to home, only behind Byron Buxton twice at 13.9 and 14.1, and D Gordon at 14.2. Yeah, like the dude's a dual threat for power and speed. And I was talking about it last week on here. Like the dude's, he's just getting extra base hits. He's getting RBIs for his team and he's just balling out like everyone thought he would. Yeah. And I'm so glad that he is because he kind of had like a little bit of a slow start to the season and everybody was just kind of like, okay, like, is this the Wander Franco that we know? Or sorry, not Wander Franco. He's still kind of stuck in my head. (laughs) (laughs) Is this the Bobby Witt that we know? Or is this like, is he just kind of slumping right now? And from what it looks like, when you carry this over, like it's now going on, you know, two and a half months, he's been killing it. You start to think, okay, this is the real deal. Like, you know, some guys just hit slumps. Yeah, he's starting to look like a guy that they can build their franchise around. Yeah, exactly. He is that five-tool kind of player that you want as the center of your franchise. Yeah, but... I was watching uh, MLB Network the other day, and they had him up there with, like, Acuna, Shohei, um, talking about dual threats for speed and power. Yeah. And I, th- for him to be that old, like, was he, 22? Yeah, he's 21. pretty young. I'm pretty sure. He might be 20, 22 or 23. Yeah. And he's up there with names like Acuna and Otani, and it's only his second year in the majors. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, But let's get to my first loser of the week. And this one's kind of tough, but helps me out a little bit. Clark Schmidt, first loser of the week. Uh, Georgia native, Altoona High School, standout. Uh, Did not have the homecoming he was looking for in Atlanta. 2.1. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was was just going to say, I hope his uh, his old teammates didn't come to watch him play. Uh, He had quite a lot of family and friends there, so I'm (laughs) sure they were. But, uh, yeah, the line goes this way. 2.1 innings pitched, nine hits, eight earned runs, two walks, and three strikeouts. Jeez. Tough scenes for Mr. Clark Schmidt. Uh, My next winner, though, was on the good side. Nicky Lopez. Holy shit, this guy, man. He became the first player to record seven hits and eight RBIs in his first two starts with the team since RBIs became an official stat in 1920. Jeez. Yeah. This man is for real. And with Ozzy Albis out and with Orlando Arcia dealing with a little bit of an injury as well, Nicky Lopez slotting right in. Yeah, and you see uh, Braves just called up Von Grissom. Yeah, not not too excited about that. No, but he's he's been tearing it up in AAA. Yeah, we, they, they just there just needs to be a four A because he's a minor league guy. That's he's not a he, he's not a major league guy yet. I love that you just said that because that is like there's a lot of guys like that where it's like they kill it in AAA, but the second they come up into the majors, it's just it's, it's like just too like big they, of a step. They, they forget how to pick up a ball. They yeah. forget how to hit a ball. And it re- it's really bad for pitchers. Oh, yeah. What, but, like, what is it? Um, 
like I know uh, Colby Allard had that problem for a while. Yep. Um, and there's there's a bunch of other. Yeah. Players. More recently, like I guess Grayson Rodriguez has been pretty good as of recent, but the beginning half of this season seemed to go like that as well. He'd pitch super well in Triple A for a couple of starts. They'd bring him up. He'd pitch like shit. And then they'd yeah. send him back down in the same thing, but now it looks like he's getting back on track. But my next loser also comes from the Yankees. A very Yankees and Brave centric uh, episode here. But I love my first, or sorry, my second loser is just the Yankees in general. <laughs> but more importantly, when Garrett Cole's pitching, <laughs> yeah, they've lost seven games that Garrett Cole started, and he went six plus innings and allowed two runs or fewer. That's the most in the MLB for any pitcher. Dude, it's a, it's a total Jacob DeGrom That's moment That's what I'm last saying. Year. Yes. Garrett Cole <laughs> is getting DeGromed right now. <laughs> like, it, it's so bad. Like, he is pitching too good for them to be losing his games. Yeah, like, the guy is straight up AL Cy Young favorite. Yeah. Well, hell, hell they're already down 3-0 in, in third. Yeah, because of right sooner now. from the Braves. Yeah, 3 Little 442 bomb. Yeah, doing what he's good at. Hitting a home run when nobody else will. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. my next winner, another pitcher though, Max Scherzer. Oh yeah. Not only is he just on fire with the Rangers, but in his what? This is like his third start. Yeah. He recorded his sixth career game with ten plus strikeouts and one or zero hits allowed. That's tied for the fourth most by any pitcher since the mound distance was set at its current distance in 1893. Jeez. He's only behind Justin Verlander with eight, Randy Johnson with 10, and Nolan Ryan, who has an astounding 19. Huh. He has 19 fucking games. <laughs> Jesus. With 10 plus strikeouts and one or zero hits allowed. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, what is it? In the yeah, his three starts, he's only given up four runs, but he's just, he's turning his season around now that he's with Texas because like, it's he's huge. three and a, he's yeah. three and oh. Um, he's only, yeah, you said he's only given up like what, 10 hits? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but I guess it right. He, I it just he feels more comfortable with Texas with with what it looks like because when he was pitching with the Mets, it was doing the same shit that uh, Garrett Cole was doing sometimes, or else he would just shit the bed. Yeah, because like with the Mets, he would feel like he has to go out there and basically try to throw a perfect game every time for them to have a chance to win. Yeah, I Texas, think I think the biggest thing for Scherzer's kind of change of scenery here is that the goal was very uncertain with the Mets, yes. you know, very quickly into the season. It was obvious they weren't playing well. They couldn't just be successful. And so the goal just was not there. In Texas, the goal is very clear. You're leading the AL West. You're one of the best teams in the American League and in the MLB. You had this fantastic offense. We just need some guys to come in and pitch because of the injuries. Max Scherzer yeah. knows his job for the Rangers. I don't think he really knew his job for the Mets. I don't think anybody knows their job for the Mets. That's true. Gosh, dude. The Braves absolutely torched them. Yeah. Yeah. 21-3. to three. Matt, Matt, Olsen's, Matt Olsen's the creator of baseball. Yeah, yeah. No, he he is the all-knowing being. Uh, but actually, you know what? Let's talk about that game. Uh, my next loser, NFL teams on Saturday. <laughs> because 17 of them were outscored by the Braves. <laughs> I love it. 21 fucking runs. Yeah, but uh, what is it? Our pitcher? Uh, how do you pronounce his last name? I think it's Win 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 Winans. Winans, yeah. Well, was dropped from the Mets for roster space earlier this year. Yeah. So the Braves signed him for like super cheap. And then he comes out and throws seven innings, gives up four hits, nine Ks, and two walks. Yeah. It's so perfect that you said that because he's my next winner. Um, <laughs> to be, I have the specific story here. So 
My winner was the Braves front office that just continues to rob the entire league of talent. Um, yeah, in 2021, the Mets let starting pitcher Alan Wanans go, and in the MLB Rule 5 draft, the Braves acquired Wanans for only $24,500. Oh, cheap. And then on Saturday, he started his second career game, and it came against the Mets, and he threw seven scoreless. The Braves won 21-3. to How crazy. Uh, of a, a story is that dude things happen when you play for the atl all right that's all i'm gonna say hey. especially when you when you play against the mets there's something in the water man but you know pete alonzo fuck that guy <laughs> he sparked something in the he atlanta did, offense dude. this year it all started when he said that shit yeah like, like this like we were good but we t- we oh my turned. God. Yeah. Like, oh my God. The yeah. madness started. Yeah. We we absolutely yeah. turned a corner when that happened. And speaking of, let's just talk a little more about that series because my next loser is the Mets, who were shut out for the 12th time this season the other day versus the Braves. It's the most times being shut out this season in the NL. They're the first team to reach base 16-plus times and get shut out in a game since the Pirates in 2015. It's the first time the Mets have done it since 1976. But also, they're on historical pace, and it's not the good kind. Because the fall that they have had this season could end up being one of the biggest collapses of a 100-win team in MLB history. Uh, according to the Elias, or Elias Sports Bureau, only three teams posted a losing record in a full season after winning 100 games. So New York has to finish the season at least, and this was as of a couple days ago, at least 29-19 and 19 to avoid a losing record, and that would put them away from joining the 1932 Cardinals, the 1971 Reds, and 1986 Cardinals. Jeez, it is yeah. like... But like you said, the collapse they've had this fall. And what, the one game they won against us in the series was against uh, Chirinos? Yeah. Did we, did, didn't we drop him, like, the next day? I th- I think we still have him. Do we? I thought I saw something that uh, that he was gone. I don't, I don't at think least so. People, people wanted him gone because he lost to the Mets. That could definitely be. Oh, yeah. No, he's gone, I think. That's, see, that's, that's what I thought. Or what? Am I dumb? I don't even know. Oh well, but it might it might be a while before he pitches again. Yeah, I think it was just people people were saying he should be dropped. Uh, but nonetheless, my next winner, still keeping it in in Georgia, <laughs> uh, Rome professional baseball. Oh. After twenty years as the Rome Braves, they are changing their name. Oh, they will remain an affiliate of the Braves, but. Um, it actually ends on the 18th. You can visit their website and submit a form suggesting a new name. Oh Lord! My question to you, Colin: What what are you what are you submitting? Dude, I let's let's see. I I think you got to keep it like Georgia centric. I think there's yeah a lot of options here. So it's just like are they just, are they trying to stay like north? Like, Maybe are they, pl- are they playing in the same stadium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're staying in Rome, and all that. Just a rebrand. Oh, dude, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of something. What's a what's a, what's a city that starts with? A, oh, dude, I I don't even know. I I've been thinking of some like. I don't even know they were thinking about it. Yeah. Um. Maybe like. Something to do with peaches. That, that's work, what that I was plays. Just in my head. But that's like that's South Georgia. Yeah. So like I don't know if that works as well up up in the mountains. Well, they're not even really in the mountains. They're not that far north. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I, I think it would be funny if they stuck with the fish. So like you have the stripers and then you have like a different fish. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to think. But I think they should go the comedic route. Let me let me see if, because uh, I know they tweeted it out. Let me see if anybody's got some that they posted on there. 
Um, you just hit him with hit him with the 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 Rome River bass. <laughs> I I like it actually. It's not bad. Okay, um, so the Augusta Green Jackets, who are part of our farm system, um, just make that have one. the Rome Big Maples. I don't like that. Um, I don't like that. The Rome Wanderers. I like Rome River Bass better. Okay, that's fair. Oh, what about the gerbils? The Rome gerbils. What the fuck? The mascot just going to be a little gerbil? <laughs> Walking around in a little cage with a gerbil? Or just have the gerbil on your shoulder? Maybe. Uh, The Rome Michael the Harris Seconds. That's from I'm... the Mississippi Braves. Yeah, man. Let's talk about him for a minute. Because, <laughs> what is it, since the All-Star break, the man's, like, slashing, like, over 300. Yeah, uh, he's absolutely turned his season entirely around after the All-Star break. I think it's up to, like, 350, because for a while there, it was, like, 385, and then he dropped a little bit. But I think since the All-Star break, he's, like, 350. He had, like, a on-base streak. I think he only he's only missed one game where he didn't get on base. Yeah. So... But, yeah, the dude's, like, because he was off to a horrible start. Remember when he was batting, like, 188? And everybody was oh, like, no. what happened to this rookie of the year guy? He's supposed to be up there with Acuna and Ozzy and Riley. It, but little do they know that he uh, he stepped it up big time. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy with his performances. I'm looking at more of these names that people are suggesting. Um, like, half the comments are Rome Redskins. <laughs> uh, come on, people! Like, what oh, what about doing? the Centurions? That's kind. Of, that's that's I guess. sick. Um, I could get behind that. The Rome, Rome's. That was from the Springfield Cardinals. All right, we don't have all day to sit here and read okay. games. All right, all right, we're done. Um, I kind of like River I, is. I like Gladiators. Yeah, but I mean, don't you already have the Atlanta Gladiators? Yeah, but that's hockey. Yeah, but you don't want multiple of the same name. Ah, there's then plenty people, of teams that have the same mascot, though. People are going to be, oh, I'm going to a Gladiators game. Oh, which one? Well, and then you'll be like, why the fuck would I go to a hockey, a minor league hockey game? Hockey's lit. It is, but minor league hockey? Yeah, I don't know. Nonetheless, let's let's move on here. Um, let's see. My next loser, anybody that's facing Abner Uribe of the Milwaukee Brewers. Because the other day, he threw a 101-mile-per-hour sinker that had 15.3 inches of run. Oof. Yeah. It, I, on, I watched the video and just about shit myself. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, this shit would have left me crying. Uh, my next winner, though, Matt Olson, who has been absolutely flying. Yeah, he now it's... leads. He leads the MLB in home runs with forty three. He's the R- RBI leader with one hundred and seven, and leads the National League in slugging and total bases. It's dude, crazy. The dude, the dude's carrying this offense right now. Yeah. But well, well, then again, the, he's not yeah, really carrying the offense because Acuna is producing super high level. Riley has been absolutely amazing. We were just talking about Michael Harris. Marcelo Zuna's bat gets in the mix here and there. Yeah, Al- Albies just went out, but he was producing very well. Like It's insane, just this entire team, everybody is excelling. Yeah, it's and Sean Murphy's... Back to healthy a little bit because I know he was out and yeah. Darno was getting the starts in. But last night he looked pretty good. Definitely. But uh, I got a question. I was like, so all this hype about uh, Acuna's home run numbers, is he about to start slashing home runs left and right toward the end of the season here? I hope so. Or is he just going to keep going his like two for four with like a single every now and or a single and then a double every now and then? I don't know. I, I Okay, look, I'll say this. 
because of how many home runs like Riley and Olsen are hitting, I'm really not that worried about Acuna hitting 40. No. That's certainly – it's almost out of the books now. But I think just the stolen bases in Yeah, general, the stolen bases insane. is crazy. I, I'd love to see 30-70. Yeah, what what is he at right now? Twenty five, uh, something like that. Let me pull him Let's up. See, real I got quick. it right here. Okay, twenty six. Okay, and twenty six is twelfth in in the NL. Yeah, he's twenty six and fifty five stolen bases. Oh, bro, great! Did you just get this message. Uh, yes. About Shane McClanahan. Yeah. Okay. So I already knew he was going to be out. I didn't know he was getting Tommy John. Oh, dude, that's well, shit. that's a big that's a big loss for the Rays right there. That kind of just I just brought up one of my losers. <laughs> oh no! But you know what? It doesn't matter. We'll talk about it. At stake your claim. A little sneak peek. Uh, but my next loser though, the Twins pitching staff because they have absolutely collapsed since the All Star break. They rank dead last in ERA and second to last in OPS. Um. Among all AL teams, Twins pitchers ranked number two in ERA and number one in OPS allowed in the first half. And now, like I said, dead last in ERA, second to last in OPS allowed. And they've allowed 29% more runs per game since the All-Star break. And it's not changing today. Bailey Ober's already given up two. Yeah, the Twins just like, and it's crazy because they still lead the AL Central. But that's just because the Guardians just, like, collapsed there and just, like, forgot how to play baseball. Yeah, honestly, at this point, the Tigers are probably going to win this division. Dude, <laughs> any any AL Central team, like, should never be in one of these winner categories that you have. Yeah. They just, they're all losers. Yeah, they, they don't make it often, unless, like, Jose ha- Ramirez does something cool. Yeah, like, beat the shit out of team a- Tim Anderson. Yeah, facts. But, no, it's like... They just, it's such a horrible division. Yeah, it is. And it's not entertaining to watch at all. Yeah, it, it like is you said, pitiful. Yeah, Detroit, Detroit's only eight games back, and they're beating the Twins right now. So if they can come away with t- at least two, did they win. Did they beat the Twins last night? Uh, Do you remember? I don't. I'll pull it up real quick. Because if they... I don't think they played yesterday. Oh, yeah, no, it started. The series starts today. Okay. Dude, if they can at least win two, maybe sweep, that makes this division a lot closer. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, at this point, like, okay, both leagues take away the central winner's playoff spot. Yeah, give, it just, to, I, give it to the East <laughs> in yeah. both leagues. Then everybody else can fight for their wild card spots. And the West will still get one playoff spot for their winner. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the NL West. Because the Dodgers are running away with this division. Yeah, it's brutal. Like, what is it? San Fran's nine games back. Arizona's yeah. 13. Padres, 16. And Colorado's 26. Yeah. Do you remember just like... Oh, I do. Like, how close that... That three team, those te- those three teams were. They were all like within two games of each other. Yeah, it was crazy. At one point, the Dodgers were in third place. Yeah, like I had a lot of hope that Arizona was just gonna stick with it. Yeah, but uh, they proved me wrong. Yeah, and it's really like, yes, the Diamondbacks are playing horrible, and so are the Giants. But it's just this horrible combination where both of them are playing bad and the Dodgers are playing phenomenal. Yeah. Like, their offense is starting to click. Their pitching is settling settling in. Yeah. Kershaw looks good. It's... It's, it's crazy. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make for a really interesting postseason, though, this year. I will say I'm very excited. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm scared. Um... They're I'm scared everything. of even the wild card teams. Yeah, dude, the wild card teams are good. Like Phillies, like Phillies are a team that, like we saw last year, when they get hot, they can beat anybody. Yeah. Marlins, if they get clicking, the Giants then, are actually like they're still a dangerous team. Yeah, though they're on but, a skid. 
I think I think the Cubs are going to end up in that last wild card spot. Yeah, you think? Who do you think drops out? Giants or Marlins? Um, I'll probably, I'll probably say the Giants will end up in there. I think the Marlins won't because I think they still have a couple series left for the division. Yeah, and I think I think they'll end up dropping out because I don't think Philly and Miami is going to be in there at the end of the season. All right. So I'm I'm gonna get Philly, San Fran, Chicago. Got to that's gonna be the NL wild card. All right. Well, as we were speaking, Ronald Acuna, four twenty, dead center. Let's go. Hey, we just had to speak it into existence. I, yeah, I guess so. So pencil him in for twenty seven. There we go. Uh, but let's get back to the winners and losers. About to wrap this one up. Uh, my next winner. The Acuna brothers. Uh, because the Mets put up a fact on their scoreboard during Ronald's at bat the other day, stating Ronald and his brother Luis Angel have a wager as to who will steal more bases this season. On Friday, Luis Angel stole two bases, putting him seven behind Ronald. He's coming for you, Ronald, is how it read on the scoreboard. What a great little wager. Yeah, too bad Ronald's going to blow him out of the water. Yeah. I got a feeling he's not stealing 70 bases in the minors this season. No, not not at all. He's not Victor Scott, okay? Facts. That dude is still, like, he's yeah. still putting up numbers. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, let's get to my last winner, though. Ichiro Suzuki. Didn't think you'd hear his name. But at Felix Hernandez's uh, Seattle Mariners Hall of Fame induction, Ichiro congratulated King Felix on all of his records and accolades, but finished by saying, according to the Mariners, by the end of this weekend, I'll still have one more bobblehead than you. I love it. Ichiro's just that guy. Yeah, he's hilarious. He's a fantastic competitor. Like, He's the kind of guy that you want representing baseball, especially on an international stage. He's one of those uh, like older like era players that I really wish I would have met, or at least got to see him play live. Yeah, because like growing up, really the only team I remember really just watching was the uh, the Braves. True. Like I I like didn't really care who they were playing because like my eyes would be on Chipper, um, and Brian McCann and stuff like that, which is crazy to think that those were the guys that I grew up watching. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But the, uh, the Upton brothers. God, don't even bring them up. Hey, bro, you got your lucky BJ bobblehead. He still sucks. So how is his bobblehead lucky? I don't know. I think it's because the head fell off. I have an Aussie one that fell off. Yeah, okay, like hold on, hold on. Okay, we're on this bobblehead talk. <laughs> um. <laughs> Why the fuck do bobbleheads, why do their heads come off way too easy? Bro, like, they're made, like, fucking, like, super thin material that, like, so I have those bobbleheads that, like, they're holding a bat. Yeah. And the, the bats just come out, like, the second you turn it upside down. Yep. But, no, I I don't know. I think because they got to make so many that they make them such cheap quality. Yeah, which, like, it makes sense, and, like, they give them out for free and stuff. But, like. Also, why why is bobbleheads the thing in baseball? I I, I don't know. It it's, it bothers me. I'm not a bobblehead guy personally. No. So am I. I I just I've never understood the whole like there's a bobblehead night like once a month at every people, MLB stadium, and people go and like wait in line for four hours just yeah. to get one. It's crazy, and then you have to sit there with it all game. Yeah. It's the weirdest part of baseball culture or like baseball fan culture is bobbleheads. I think the last time I went to a game and it was a bobblehead, I ended up just like giving mine out to a little kid that wasn't able to get one. Yeah. Just because I'd like, number one, you always got to always help the kids out. Yeah. I love when I, whenever you like, you catch a fly ball or yeah, a foul that ball. Happen, that doesn't happen often. Okay. Well, I've had some games where I caught a couple. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you hand them out to the kids. I used to I do was that like, in uh, batting practice when I was yeah. little and go. But, That's uh, sick. Yeah, 
namely the one game where I caught three. That was sick as fuck. Foul three, balls? Yeah, three foul balls. Because what, it was those seats, like that? that upper level behind the home plate. And yeah. it was it was just a hot spot that day. And I got three. I kept one, and I gave two away to little kids around me. You didn't give one to Ethan? I think I gave him mine. Uh, Either way, they, it was coming home with us. Uh, but let's get to my last loser. Uh, somehow the Mariners, uh, on Saturday, they pitched 10-plus innings, allowed fewer than five hits, no earned runs, no walks, and no extra base hits, and they lost. Yeah, that game was so weird. Yeah, and the last MLB team to put up those numbers on the mound but still lose was the Senators. On August 28th, 1913, with Walter Johnson taking the 10-inning complete game loss. Jeez. How crazy is that, dude? That is... That's just... That's Seattle baseball for you. Yeah, it it is insane. Which amazes me because they have fought their way back to be in a position to where they can contend for the wild card. Yeah. Because they were one of those teams that we thought was uh, was going to be selling at the All Star break because they like were they were like in the same position with the Cardinals. Yeah, but they really turned it around. Yeah, what, what two games out of a wild card spot? They're sixty three and fifty five. Yeah, I think they're right behind Toronto. Yeah, they're they're crazy good right now, and it does help that the Angels, Yankees, and Red Sox all suck. Yeah. All right, so did you see MLB's power rankings list? I did not. All right, I want I want your thoughts on it. Okay. So I'm a, I'm gonna read through where everybody's at. All right. And I just I just want to hear your thoughts. So number one, you know we got the Braves, Makes two sense. Dodgers, three okay. Orioles, four Rangers, five Rays, six Astros, seven Phillies, eight Blue Jays, nine Mariners, ten Brewers. I see no problems. I think that's the best power rankings list that they've had all season. Yeah. Like, this is exactly, you know, maybe down there at the bottom, maybe I would have switched a couple of things around, but. Yeah. Yeah, that's, right. that's, <laughs> I couldn't think of a better way to compile that list, especially that's, like seven through one. Yeah. Cause like, there were people that were like, Oh well, you you're leaving off the Giants and the Cubs and stuff like that. That's just because like the Cubs, I can see people making an argument for like they're one of the um, highest firing offenses right now coming back from the All Star break. Yeah, but they're not winning as much as they really no are slated to. They're scoring runs, but they're also giving up runs. Yeah, like they're six and four in their last ten, which is like relatively average, but if they were a little bit better before that run, maybe they make it. But yeah. you're sitting at sixty one and fifty seven. Yes, you're one game out of a wild card spot, but let's be honest, the Giants and Marlins at sixty three wins, yes, it is impressive. It's not like they're outstanding teams. That's why neither of those teams are on that power ranking either. Yeah. Because they started off really good, but they're slumping right now. Yeah. And when you have teams like Philly, the Blue Jays, the Mariners, and the Brewers that are absolutely fleecing teams right now. Yeah, no, like this is a this is a perfect top ten. Yeah. And the Astros are starting to look like the Astros everybody hates. Yes. And I think it's because Verlander's and, back. Yeah. Like both Scherzer and Verlander are pitching better now that they're away from the Mets. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. It's I think the I think the Mets finish last place next year in the NL East. They could I, this year. Oh dude, that I They're only a game ahead of the Nats. You're lying. No. Oh my. The Mets are 54 and 65, the Nationals are 53 and 66. Okay, but listen, the Nationals, Lane Thomas and C.J. Abrams are are balling out right now. Yeah. Like, they're playing super well. The problem is they have zero pitching. Yeah, like McKenzie Gore and Josiah Gray are their only 
bright spots and it's not that bright. No. Like they'll have a good outing every couple starts. Yeah. Like I was watching uh, I was on break at work and the Nationals were playing like a 12 12 o'clock game. Yeah. And McKenzie Gore gave up like four or five runs in the first inning to the Ooh. uh to the Padres. Ooh. The Larue- team he got traded from. Luis Severino leaving the game after four innings, 83 pitches. Good. The guy's a bum. Yeah, he's ass. These are the kind of things I like to say when Luke's not on the pod. <laughs> I like to just disgrace the Yankees. Actually, I want to bring this up because it's a, it's a often a topic of discussion, the Yankees and the Braves, but they don't often match up. And it just so happens that Luke is out of town and returning to college Right when we're playing. So, of course, I have to send him a text when we're up, what, like last night we were up like 8-2, right? Yeah. I sent him a text. I just said, get fucked. And he was like, okay. (laughs) And I was like, that's okay. And he said, joke's on you. Everybody fucks the Yankees. And I just, (laughs) you know, whatever. And then he goes, "And and don't make me say it. Knowing damn well exactly what he was going to say. So I said, say it. And he said, 27 rings. This motherfucker. He's living in the past, man. Yeah. And so I said, when was your last one? He said, over 10 years ago. And I said. Not, not relevant. I said, there you go. There's your answer. And he goes, just wait. I said, for what? At least another season, if not much, much more. He said, we're going to we're gonna go on a run. I said, into a brick wall. So, essentially, I'm going to talk shit about the Yankees all I want, especially when Luke's not here to defend himself. But I'm I'm, I'm ready for Thursday's episode when, yeah. Luke, when Luke talks about how bad the Yankees yeah, are. Yeah, when we complete this sweep, it's going to be real nice. You guys are going to hear... Some uh, some good talk. It's probably more going to be me just kicking Luke while he's down. Yeah. It's it's what it's going to be, but I'm going to enjoy the shit out of it. Yeah. It's going to be another 10 years until we see a ring come, come out of New York, <laughs> whether it's the Mets or the Yankees. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Colin, anything else you got to talk about for the MLB? Um, uh, I mean... Really, people people were saying that Baltimore's the dead set winner for AL East, but Tampa Bay's still fighting on. Yeah, right I think they're behind them. I think that Shane McClanahan news though, that's not yeah, good. It's not good, but see, they went out and got a guy like Aaron Savali. Yes, uh, to sort of be there in case something like this were to happen, and they got guys that can that can still shove. So I think it's bad news but it's not the end of the world for them. They can still compete without them. All right. We'll have to see. Uh, anything else? Uh, nah, that's that's really about it. All right. I mean, yeah. Well, then let's get into the NFL. We'll start with the NFL news, and then we'll talk a little bit of preseason. Colin, Dalvin Cook has officially signed. Bro, I was – I my jaw dropped. Yeah. When I, when I got because I got to work and saw this and I looked at Clark and I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> yes. Dalvin Cook is signing a one year deal worth eight point six million with the New York Jets. So does that mean we see like it's still going to be a minute before we see Brees Hall come back? It might be. It'll probably be like two, three weeks into the season. Like, do do they like take a little extra time to make sure he's. 120 percent healthy before he steps back on the field i don't know because i think Brees hall definitely you know no matter what's there he's gonna want to be back yeah but, so uh, yes they helped. they can take it slow but i don't think he's gonna want to yeah i think it's gonna help that he can learn from a guy like dalvin cook yeah it's only gonna add to his arsenal exactly and it's just gonna help him out he's not gonna have such high volume as well yeah. which yeah you know it kind of hurts the numbers but when you're looking at production and efficiency from a running back having a second guy like dalvin cook on your team could do nothing but but good things for you dude that offense is so scary when oh Brees it's comes crazy back, it's even without absolutely Brees. insane like you got the three-headed monster of aaron Rodgers, dalvin cook and garrett wilson yeah 
So it's just what the fuck. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely insane. But another running back got picked up, Ezekiel Elliott. Signing a one-year deal worth six million with the New England Patriots. I I liked it. Yeah, it, it sort of it gives the Patriots a different style than Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, um, because you know Ramondre is sort of like that more receiving type back, and Zeke can the ground and pound. Yeah, I think he offers um good value at running back for the Patriots. Six million is not much. That's a Pretty average salary for kind of a, uh, a an above like average slash good running back. Yeah, a guy like Ezekiel. Elliott. Yeah, exactly. And I, I really do think that he's going to help out this offense. I still don't think they're going to be good. Nah, but they need a quarterback before they can be good. Yeah, true. I'm glad to hear you saying that. Bro, Matt Jones has just been a fucking disappointment in the <laughs> NFL. I'm glad. I'm glad that an Alabama fan can admit that some of their quarterbacks aren't good in the NFL. Like how you said, some. Yeah, well, we have to see what happens with Bryce Young. Yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, but the next thing is crazy. Yeah. Michael Orr, obviously the topic of the movie The Blind Side, um, was, I guess, allegedly adopted by a family. They took him in. He went to Ole Miss, had an NFL career, all of that. He's saying that his adoption was a lie and that the, I think it's Tui? Tui Yeah, the Tui family. family. Yeah, so the Tui family took all of the film proceeds that he would have gotten and that it wasn't actually an adoption, but instead the papers he signed were for a conservatorship where they would take percentage of the money that he made throughout his career yeah i was talking to my dad about it and it's just like one of those things you try to wrap your brain around and is is it like because he was he 18 when he joined that family um i i think he was 17 because i was gonna say because isn't it like once you hit 18 you can't technically like get adopted I'm I'm not too sure on like the logistics of that. Overall, he just got he got blindsided by his own yes. who he thought was his family. Correct. So what a perfect movie title. Yeah. It, I will say it's kind of weird timing because apparently Michael Orr has a book coming out. Yeah. Or like it I just came out like the same day that this whole story dropped. That's a little interesting. And I, I've heard the Tui family side of it, which I don't know. Both sides make good points. I, I feel like Michael Orr would be the one to believe in the situation, but I I really don't know. It, it's very weird that uh, he's alleging that he found out about this in February of this year. Yeah. It's... Like, don't you think that once you got into your, like your adulthood, you would have thought like you would have thought to go back and look at that as something? I mean, not really. He was. I mean, he was worried about playing in the NFL. Yeah, but like, what? He retired like multiple years ago. Yeah, but there, it's it's just a weird thing. I I can't believe SJ would do him like that. Crazy. SJ was his buddy. Yeah, but also I, know, I don't think SJ do, did. <laughs> little did we know SJ was the uh, mastermind taking all his money. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Then again, I don't think it was SJ. I think it was the mom and dad, but... Leanne Tui. Yeah, Leanne and... Who, what was it as him? Sean? Sean. Yeah, Sean. Okay. Yeah, like, it's just... It's such a weird situation. And I... Honestly, I've looked through, like, a lot of the news articles about it. I don't know anything. Like, I, I really don't, because everything is just, like, conflicting. Let's just say yesterday was uh, there was a lot of news around sports. Yeah, but like I was on, I was on the phone with Nathan. Nathan was like, "Y'all are in for a great day tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, there, there's certainly been a lot. But today it came out that the Tui family is saying that Michael Orr asked them for fifteen million dollars before filing this 
uh, this court case or whatever it really is. But he just run out of money or something? That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. He spent all the le- all the rest of his money on his book. Maybe. Yeah, I, I'm. I don't know. I'm starting to think that maybe it's just like he was running out of money, saw this opportunity. I, I don't know, but it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see what, how this turns out. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, whatever is correct is correct, and it'll just go on. But yeah, how how wild! It also <laughs> such a shit movie. <clears throat> No comment. But the next thing has to do with, I guess, TV, whatever. Uh, Prime Video is announcing that they've green-lighted Kelsey, a documentary that follows Eagles All-Pro Center Jason Kelsey through the 2022-2023 season, which was last year. That documentary will premiere September 12th on Prime Video. I am so excited. Bro, I'm loving all these, like, football documentaries yep. that are coming out right now. It's so great. Like the Manziel one was phenomenal. Yeah. I loved it. And then quarterback, which was phenomenal. Like if, if you haven't watched quarterback, you 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 don't like sports. I've come to realize. Yeah. But uh, what a perfect guy to do a doc on. I know, Jason right? Kelsey. Yeah. Like, uh, when I saw Kelsey, I figured it'd be both of them. <laughs> but what With a, it what just a, being Jason Kelsey, totally fine a, by me. What a dog that would be. Oh, my God. Kelsey brothers. Follows both of them. You get to see Jeez. the life of Travis Kelsey. Yeah, that one. That would be fucking interesting. It's passed out in Miami. <laughs> maybe, maybe season two of Kelsey is Travis. Maybe. That would be cool. That would, yo. You need a job, Gray? They need to hire you. Maybe. Need to be the producer. Yo, hit me up, Am Bezos. Slide in, bro. I got you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be your visionary. I, I, I love it because you know I hate watching cable unless it's the Braves game. So yep. Yeah. Half fuck cable not, TV. Half the time the game's not even on cable anymore. True. Fucking Apple TV. <laughs> <Weird-ass> <laughs> All right, our next thing, though, still dealing with television shows, I guess. Uh, Daniel Jones declined to be on season two of Netflix's quarterback. I was really hoping he'd be on. Yeah, but I don't know. He's still trying to make his mark, all right? So, because he I had, get it. like, last, last year was his, like, first year of actually being good. Yeah. And he doesn't want, he doesn't want, I can understand that. He doesn't want all this shit to get to his head. And then he blows out and, becomes the worst yeah. quarterback in the league. Honestly, the the main guy who I want to see is Geno Smith. Yeah. Geno would be that. so good. I would love to see Baker on it too. Yeah, that would be interesting as well. G- Geno, Baker, and Jalen Hurts I think would be a great yeah. season. I think Jalen Hurts turned it down though. No, he did. But we're it saying sucks. guys that we wish we would we wish to see. Yeah. Maybe oh, did Josh Allen turn it down? I can't remember. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And so did Trevor. And so did Joe. Yep. Like all all the top guys turned it down. Yeah. They mu- they must have saw something with the uh, Mahomes that they didn't like. It would be cool to get Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see Dude, retirement. imagine they did Rodgers last year and they got the darkness treat. Oh my god. I don't I don't want to see a retirement home every every episode. Fair. We'll see. But speaking of Rodgers, uh, the Jets cornerback DJ Reed had quite the story about watching the first episode of Hard Knocks. He said Hard Knocks was lit, but noted that he didn't have HBO in the hotel room at training camp, so he had his girl FaceTime him with her phone facing the TV. <laughs> 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 and he said, I kept telling her to keep her phone straight, but her arm was getting tired, and sometimes she was pausing because she was texting. Bro. <laughs> Bro, just buy the subscription on your phone. I just see I just see DJ, hold the damn phone straight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. You're a professional athlete. You can afford a month-long subscription to HBO Max or to Max to watch it. <laughs> 
Hell, man, just get the free trial for seven days. Yeah. Finish it in seven days. Exactly. But oh, no, that, that, that's the funny as shit. Honestly, I mean, that's, that's a loyal girl, though. It is. That. It is. Too bad who, she was who was she texting? texting? Yeah, that's a who great question. Who was she question. texting? Sauce Gardner. <laughs> Damn, that, that's tough. Uh, but let's talk about some guys on the holdout, man. Nick Bosa, still yeah, holding out. This is crazy. Yeah, it's insane. And, and, like, there should be nothing holding back the 49ers from paying him whatever he wants. Yeah. He deserves every cent. Yeah. But. I, I think it's insane that he hasn't gotten paid. Like, let's, like, who's the highest paid? I'm going to look it up. Who's the highest paid uh, edge rusher or highest paid defensive end? Uh, is it Joey? Well, I guess it was JJ. Yeah. But now he's but retired. He's I'm trying to think. Okay, I know the defensive tackles. Okay, defensive end. Micah? Miles Garrett. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, Miles Garrett's making 25 a year. Max Crosby's making 23 and a half. Which Leonard, Max Crosby deserves it, yeah, bro. That dude's yeah. a fucking unit. Really, everybody up here deserves their money. Vaughn is kind of high at this point in his career at 20. Like, yeah, like, where is... Is Bosa still in his rookie deal? Maybe. Why is... Um, okay, he's just not on this list. No, it's not a good list. Then. Yeah. Uh, but no, either either way, man, like, Nick Boson needs to be one of the highest, pay, if not the highest yeah. paid defensive. Oh, yeah. Because the it's, dude rips, he rips people's head off for a living. Yeah, it's crazy that he's not already. On one of the most list. elite defenses we've ever seen. Yeah. Basically since, uh, what is it, Legion of Boom, Seattle's defense, what was that, 2014? Yeah, like that that time. Yeah, the Legion of Boom era. Yeah. So he's but got he's got one year left on his deal, and it's around eighteen million. Hmm. And this is Joey, Nick, Nick. Okay. I I don't know. And apparently, um, he's gonna face a one million dollar fine for missing that preseason game. Boo hoo. Well, that's one eighteenth of his contract. I don't think he's worried about that. I don't think he is either, but come on. Twenty six? Yeah. I think twenty six is what he should get. One one million more than Miles Garrett. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, Miles Garrett's a beast, but he's not Nick Bosa. Yeah, that is that's a fact. Yeah. Uh but um Let's talk about a defensive tackle that's holding out now. Chris Jones, uh, interestingly enough, was hanging out with famed director Michael Bay. I don't know why. (laughs) And Michael Bay posted a photo and captioned it. He just quit the team. Crazy. I have a feeling Chris Jones did not quit the team. That's some Michael Bay shit. Yeah. He likes to be extreme. Always that cliffhanger. Always that cliffhanger. But. If Chris Jones is expecting Aaron Donald money to come back, he's don't out of his fucking like, mind. Yeah, don't be doing shit like this. Like, okay, I'm cool. Like, if Chris Jones wants more than what Quentin Williams got, that's cool. That's fine by me. Because Chris Jones already makes $20 million a year. Yeah. Taking him up to 25 26 that's cool. You're not getting 32 like Aaron Donald. Nobody's getting 32 like Aaron Donald. No. Unless you're Aaron Donald. Yeah. No, there's no chance in hell that Chris Jones gets that. And I get it. Chris Jones is a fucking monster. You're not getting paid Aaron Donald money. The only way you get paid Aaron Donald money is if you play like Aaron Donald. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest. The Rams made quite a big mistake giving him that much money because they really, I don't think they really had to. I don't think so either. Because, like, when he signed that deal, that made him the highest paid by, like, $10 million. Yeah, you could have gave him, like, 
27, 28, and he yeah. probably would have been fine with it. Yeah, and he'd still be the highest paid. Yeah. But you're setting this unrealistic precedent for other teams, and now they can't even sign their guys. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that problem in the NFL right now. Yeah. Yeah. No matter the position. And then Jonathan Taylor uh, is expected back at Colts training camp. Uh, but first, um, just so everybody's aware, his position has not changed. He still wants to be traded. And he has communicated to the team that he will practice and play only when he is 100% ready to go. Do you think they actually trade him? I think they'd be smart to. I do too. But I don't know. I think Jim Irsay is busy trying to move a whale to the fucking to Washington. Yeah. I just I like the Colts are hurting their team by keeping Jonathan Taylor. How so? I I I really think cuz you're keeping a guy that doesn't want to be there. Yeah. I can I can already guess that he's an energy vampire in in the locker room and on the field and stuff like that. Like nobody wants to be his teammate there. I don't know, because it seems like a bunch of guys backed him up the second he was like, I want to get traded. I, I don't know. I there, There's a lot of, like, but, yeah, this could always be edited and stuff that I saw on, like, videos of, like, the practices and shit where he would just, like, run the play and then go stand by himself on the other side of the sideline. Yeah. Or just, like, walk in the locker room after a couple plays. And... I'm trying to think. Was it Gardner? You see the video with between him and Gardner Minshew? No, I didn't. There was like one of their offensive plays. They threw a touchdown. Gardner Minshew high fived everybody except Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Well then, yeah, that's it's a little weird. Yeah, like it's it's like one of those things that it's like if you have a guy who's going out on social media saying he does not want to play here, don't keep him. Yeah, you're I, only hurting you're you're only hurting your team. That's fair. But if the Colts have some way of fixing this, I feel like they should try. Yeah. But I think Jonathan Taylor's mind's never changing. Okay. Unless well, he gets the biggest bag we've ever seen. Yeah. I and I don't think he will. No. Not after he's going out and doing all no, this shit. Definitely not. Uh but let's get to this next thing, the Ravens. So they won their preseason game against the Eagles last weekend, 20-19. to 19. They've Ooh. now won 24 consecutive preseason games, dating back to 2015. This is why I don't really care about preseason. I know, but that's kind of impressive. Yeah. I'm happy you can beat fourth string and practice squad players. Okay, but you get why it's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive to be really good in the preseason shit and regular season. For the sake of preseason football on its own. Yeah. It's crazy that they can do this. Because they're also yeah. not putting out good players. Yeah, which means that they need to just start like they need to start starting their practice squad players. <laughs> like their third and fourth string guys need to be starters. Maybe. Maybe that's the key. Like, cause like, was it was it Josh Johnson that started their started their game? It could literally have been anybody. Hold on, I'm curious now. Cause I know they're running backs. I know like Gus Edwards. It looks like Tyler um, Huntley was the starter. Was Huntley the starter? Yeah, Tyler Huntley, Josh Johnson, and was, Anthony Brown. Okay, so you have a Pro Bowl quarterback going out there. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> that was bullshit. He you should not have been a game. pro bowler. You got to win the game if you have a pro bowl quarterback starting week one. The Eagles had a fantastic quarterback on there. Marcus Mariota. Yeah. 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 Okay. Whatever you want to say, bud. All right. But nonetheless, impressive. And we'll see if it keeps going. Yeah, I mean, I like I like what we're seeing out of over there. Um, Baltimore's training camp. I mean, Dever Duvin. Devin, Devin Duvernay. <laughs> that was really bad. Yeah, that was a tough one. Duvernay looks good. I know just from we're seeing in practice, Odell. Yeah. Uh, Zay Flowers looks phenomenal. 
But I mean, Zay Flowers is Zay Flowers. So. Yeah. I will say that Philadelphia's running back room is crazy. Like, so interesting to look at because they don't need all these running back guys when your quarterback's just going to run. That's true. Like, I mean, you got Rashad Penny, DeAndre Swift. I forgot they had Trey Sermon. Me too. I was looking at it and I was like, wait, when the fuck did he get there? Yeah, because uh, wasn't he with uh, San Fran? Um, I, yeah, yeah, he was. Because he was like, he was having a, like, a great year as uh, RB2. Yeah. Or RB3, and then he got hurt. Yeah, that's right. But Damn. no, I mean, I forget Baltimore got Melvin Gordon. Like, there's a lot of guys that were, moved around the league that I just totally forgot. <laughs> yeah, a lot of guys just kind of slip under the radar. Uh, but let's move on here. David Bakhtiari uh, on why the Packers offense is employing more run pass option looks with Jordan Love. This is a, a quote, word for word, because Aaron is slow as shit. Now we actually have an athletic quarterback that can move around. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong at all. I mean, Jordan Love has been looking pretty good at camp. Yeah, I, I like what I see. He's, he's starting to click, and, you know, he's getting comfortable around his guys, and his guys are starting to, you know, give him the respect he, he deserves. Yeah, and, like, as much as Aaron Rodgers, like, opens up so many doors for your offense. He's kind of a dick. <laughs> oh, that's not what I was going to say. But <laughs> that, was just, that was just the first thing that come, came to my head. Okay, fair enough. But I don't know why. What I was going to say is... Though he can't, you know, there there are things he cannot do. He's not going to run RPOs very much because he has the ability to put players into space deep down the field. He has all of these abilities passing, but it, at the same time, he limits your offense. When you yeah. can run an RPO successfully with a quarterback like Jordan Love and with players like Christian Watson and Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon and the numerous other fast, good players they have on this offense, it opens so many doors for creative play calling. And I think that that like could be something that's huge for this Packers offense this year. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So look out. Look out for the, re- look out for the Packers. Like like our uh, sports econ professor said, go Pack, go. <laughs> I don't know if we're rooting for the Packers. No, but but uh, look out for them. They might they might honestly, have something on their hands. Honestly, I'm rooting for them. What about like, when I they want, play I, the Falcons? I, I, well, they're gonna okay. take that fat L. <laughs> okay. Come on, man. Jordan I, loves you to throw like four picks, and then Bijan's gonna have like th- four touchdowns. All right. I just I had to keep you in check. Come on, man! You think I'm gonna flip like that? I I didn't think you would, if, but if I flip in the NFL, I'm sure shit not going to the Packers. That's fair enough. I'm gonna go join my brother Ronnie and go to the Eagles. Yeah. Come on, that's man! A, what that's we, what a good we, idea. What are we, what are we doing? <laughs> but uh, next thing, this is a crazy story. So the the Saints rookie kicker, uh, I think it's Blake Group, uh, played in his first <laughs> preseason game. And had an interesting experience. Uh, He listed what happened in a tweet saying, Step one, get questioned walking onto the field pregame for not having credentials. Funny as shit. Even though he's a fucking player. Step two, hit a game winner. Step three, get stopped by security thinking I was a fan when trying to walk out the player exit. Stay humble, thankful, great team win. That's that's so fucking funny. Yeah. Like, how does that even happen? <laughs> like, guy just hits a game winner for you and security stops you like, hey, bro, you can't, come, you, you can't yeah. go this way. Who the fuck are you, dude? Like, come on now. The guy's yeah. like, the guy's like living on an all-time high and then he gets brought back, brought back down to earth. Yeah. So. Yeah. Pretty tough. Uh, but another great story. Um. And forgive me for the pronunciation of this guy's last name. Just say Kenneth. Kenneth Odumegwu. 
Odemegwu. I, th- I think that second. I think o- that second one's got it. Odemegwu. Yeah, I think that's probably that close. Right. Okay, well, he that plays for right. the Packers, and he played in their preseason game. But this was his first game of organized football. How did how did he get on the team then? Uh, apparently, he got scouted by like an international scout, I believe, and they had him doing drills. Um, and uh, apparently, he just looked like somebody that could be good at football. He's from Nigeria. Um, he's six six two fifty nine, twenty two years old, and they just kind of found him. Yeah. Um, it, here, I'm reading his bio right now on the Packers website. He was allocated to the Packers on May 4th, 2023 from Nigeria as a part of the NFL International Player Pathway Program. And it's their first player uh, through that program. Uh, let's see. He reserve, or he received an invite by former defensive lineman or defensive end O.C. Umeniori, uh, don't know how to say that one either, uh, at NFL Africa's touchdown camp in Ghana, where he was assigned a defensive end and captured defensive MVP honors. So I, I guess this guy is just naturally a football player, and Matt LaFleur loves him. Apparently the team loves him as well, and LaFleur gave him a game ball to commend his efforts and show his appreciation because – the organization has loved who he's been as a person and who he has been for this team. So shout out Kenneth. What what a fantastic story. Never playing organized football until you get to the NFL. Yeah, I mean that that's inspiration. Yeah, absolutely we're, crazy. We're probably gonna get we're probably gonna get a movie about that. So. Yeah, that yeah, that sounds like a movie. It's like uh, like baseball's million dollar arm where they go out to a different country yep. recruit. Yeah. And now then, this guy just has to have like a like a very good season in the NFL. Has a, a, a you said he's a defensive player, right? Yeah, defensive end. Game winning force fumble picked yep. up for a touchdown to win. Yeah, this is like the NFC championship. Yeah, this is a this has got Disney movie written all over it. <laughs> It's way oh. better than the blind side. Man, stop throwing so much <laughs> shade at the blind side. Right? You know, just because when we talked about it, I liked that movie. Now you're trying to throw you know, shade. No, you know that I don't like that movie. I called it out when you said you liked it. I know. So why do we got to keep bringing it up? Because it's not a good movie. But um, next story, though, Khalil Herbert said that if a Bears player breaks for a run and gets tackled inside the five-yard line, they have to pay a fine. And people are saying that this probably led to him breaking three tackles on the way to the end zone on his 56-yard touchdown the other day. But he did not want to pay that fine. I wonder I how much him. it is. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder how much I have it a is. feeling it's not crazy. Uh, at least for an NFL player. Let's just say it's a million dollars. Yeah, but he did say that was definitely on his mind and he did not want to pay that fine. Hey, good for Khalil. Yeah. Dude, dude's got potential to be RB1. Yeah, he's got a chance. He's very who's good. He, who's he going up against? It's uh, Is it David Montgomery? No, it's Dante Foreman. They're, oh, yeah, Dante Foreman. That's right. Yeah, David Montgomery's on the Texans. Um. Let's talk some special. No, teams. he's on the. I thought he was on the Lions. Pretty sure he's on the Texans now. I thought it was Singletary and Pierce. Oh, that's who, fuck, dude. Jesus Christ! Come on, man. What are we doing? I I mix I, I don't know why I do mix up David Montgomery and Devin Singletary. How? I don't know. Probably because they're both. They put up very similar numbers. Yeah, they're both. They're not that good. Uh, but let's talk some special teams because fantastic special teams going on in the preseason. Yes, and we'll sir. start with Logan Cook. His first punt of the day for the Jags. A four and a half second hanging 60-yard knuckleball to the numbers. The Cowboys punt returner 
actually catches it somehow, starts running, loses possession, and gives the Jags the ball back. Jeez. But, Four or five to go 60 yards yeah. is insane. And, it, and like the way, like I watched the video, the way it knuckled, I, I had zero chance catching that ball. Even if it was a normal. That's true. Normal kick. We're probably not catching yeah. it. Let's Staying up in the air that long is crazy. Or baseball, guys. I'm I don't know. Catching... I feel like I could maybe, like, give me, like, ten tries. I'm reeling yeah. in two. Bro, these punts are kicked so high. Yeah, that's the problem. That shit's going to hurt when it comes down. Yeah, no shit. But it, if, if I see a football hanging out there for four and a half seconds. Yeah, and the fact that it was knuckling. 60 yards. Yeah. Impressive. Absolutely. Punters need to get the respect that they deserve. Yes, facts. Punters are people too. But our next one doesn't really come as a surprise. Uh, 17 minutes into their preseason, the Broncos already have a kicking issue. And um, they've certainly got a usual suspect there. Brett Maher. Him and Elliot Fry both missed <laughs> their field goal attempts in the first 17 minutes of the game. Are we surprised at all that Brett Maher can't kick a field goal? No, bro. You stay in Brett's <laughs> head. All right. <laughs> hey, that job offer's still on the table, Brett. <laughs> I will, I'll no. gladly bring you on, man. No, but I mean, that's the reason to, like, I'll, I'll say uh, Broncos' offense looked for the, like the one drive they were out. Like their starters looked pretty good. Yeah. From what I saw. I don't know. Russell like, Wilson's still kind of shit. I th- I think this year we're just gonna see how bad Nathaniel Hackett actually was, or how good Sean Payton really is. Because like we know Sean Payton's a great coach. Yeah. So like I, how- I don't I don't think anything that happens this year, we should really blame on Nathaniel Hackett that much for not doing it. Because Sean Payton is just a fantastic coach. Like if they brought in another first year head coach. Then, and like they had great success, then you could throw some shit at Nathaniel Hackett. But yeah. when you bring in a legendary Super Bowl winning head coach, it's a little different. Yeah. Also based, like there is a Disney movie about him too. That's, is it Disney? It's a movie. Is it? No, no it's on Netflix. Movie? Okay. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Doesn't Kevin James play him? Yeah. Kevin, Kevin James plays Sean Payton. That's so weird. <laughs> Like what the and and Taylor Lautner's in the movie and shit like that. Oh my yeah, I'm, I I haven't watched it and I'm not gonna. It's actually a great movie. I'm not watching it. Come on, man. <laughs> we'll watch it. Too. No, we won't. Um, Joe Burrow seems to be back in action. He was moving around, hurling the ball like 50 yards down the field for fun. Um, so yeah, looks like uh, no setbacks for the Bengals this year. That's good. It is. I mean, not for that Luke. Means, that means Jamar Chase probably be taken at number two in fantasy this year. Probably, probably. Wait, do you have the number two pick? No, I have four. Okay. Oh yeah, I have three. Yeah. So I can't talk any football strategy with you. I cannot. Yep. It's fucking annoying. It's fine. You could talk second round. Who are you gonna take in the second round? You pick before me. Uh, I'm you can't say going. anything. Everybody in the league's gonna listen to this <laughs> if you do. <laughs> yeah, I can't, man, but I'm definitely going probably wide receiver. Okay, fair enough. I um, got my eyes on you guys. All right, let's talk about the 49ers quarterbacks. Trey Lance totally flopped uh, in that first preseason game. On three drives, he had no first downs and got sacked three times. The three drives, the first one lasted one minute and 49 seconds. The second, one minute, 19 seconds. And the third, one minute and five seconds. After that, man, dude, Trey Lance just earned his spot as QB3. Yeah. I don't know if Brock, I earned. Brock, no, he <laughs> earned his spot at QB3. Yeah, he earned it by how bad he was playing. Exactly. Yeah. So what, you got Brock Purdy and Sam Darnold? Yeah. Jesus. Trey Lance just might need to hang it up. <laughs> Bro, or, he might need to hit the road, man. Go play in the uh, CFL. Maybe. I don't know. Like, I, I saw a tweet earlier. The guy just has never gotten that many snaps. Like, in yeah. his entire career. 
Because like yeah. he didn't start like all of high school or anything. I think he only started as a senior in high school. Then he goes yeah. to North Dakota or North Dakota State. Only started two years there. And just balled out those two years. Yeah, and like he has like a decent amount of preseason snaps and a pretty low amount of NFL snaps. Like the guy just has never really gotten a chance to throw the ball a lot. So, you know, hopefully he can figure it out. But for now, Brock Purdy's the guy. In spots like these, you don't get a lot of options to, you don't get a lot of options. You don't get a lot of time. Yeah. You got to make the best of your moments. And for three drives, not to get a single first down, it's not that. Yeah, definitely not. And, like, you know, prior to this, it was just like, oh, he got hurt, so he has an excuse. Yeah. Th- there's now no excuse he, now. He's just bad. And it makes it worse for the 49ers that they picked him so high because the next 10 picks after him were Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, Panay Sewell, J.C. Horn, Patrick Sertan, Devontae Smith, Justin Fields, Micah Parsons, and Rashawn Slater. Damn, so the 49ers could have had Justin Fields. Yeah. That <laughs> blows my mind. They could have had a lot of fantastic players. They could have had Micah Parsons. Lined up with Bosa. Oh, my God. Or Jamar Chase or Jalen Waddle lined Patrick up with Patrick Sertan. Yeah, but I mean, you have Jamar Chase on one side and Debo on the other side, and then you got McCaffrey in the backfield. And Ayuk. Oh my Bro. J.C. Horn. Yeah. They could have had some good-ass players. Instead, they have a third-string quarterback. They fucked this draft up so hard. Yeah, but luckily, the guy that they spent the last pick of last year's draft, uh, Brock Purdy, he's fully cleared to play. Not sure if he'll be in this weekend, but he can play in practice with no day off, no restrictions, nothing. He is ready to go. It's good. It is. Sure is. And um, actually, I didn't put it in the notes here, but Bryce Young and Anthony Richardson, week one starters. Really? Yes. Oh, that's the ant. They had a rough. Rough outing uh, yeah, for their first drives. They did. Didn't uh like the three main rookies? They didn't even get a touchdown. Yeah, I believe so. And they combined for like three interceptions. Yeah. Yikes! It wasn't but great. But one, CJ one Stroud. I don't even think. I don't. Okay, so they're still expecting him to be the QB one. Nah, bro. You got to go with Davis Mills, bro. I, I hate to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but you might. I think Davis he just he needs a little good. time. But also, it's Maybe. one week of the preseason. Yeah. So, like, I don't think we can overreact yet. Because I do think with the Texans specifically, it's going to come down to, like, th- week three or four of the preseason to really decide. Yeah. What is it? But if Davis Mills keeps stepping up, we're going to see him starting Yeah, week which one. sucks. <laughs> He couldn't even about, lose when he needed to. How about the Houston Texans? 20-9. to nine Yeah. Against the Pats. They look good. Tank Dell looked good. Yes, he did. He's, he's going to be a sleeper this year. So, everybody for your fantasy football drafts, when you get late and you need like a second string flex or yep. like a wide receiver five or six, Tank Dell's your guy. Certainly. Um. I, I want to talk about this because it's crazy. Uh, former NFL cornerback and alumni of my high school, Buster Screen, uh, was arrested on multiple fraud charges in Canada. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the former Bear and I believe Packer, Buster, or er, maybe Jet as well. Golly gee, why yeah. would he do that? Come on, Buster. Also, why did I just say golly gee? Yeah, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and you even what? you even said it in a weird voice. Dude. <laughs> my... Bro, who stole Colin? <laughs> Yo, where, where is Colin he? Go? 
He's locked up with Buster Scruggs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this this was so weird. When I saw this, I was like, I have to talk about this because we went to the same high school. Yeah, shout out Edward. Yeah. I think he's still the only yeah, the only guy to play like NFL snaps from Edward. Because Bronson uh, Rexsteiner got on like a practice squad for the Ravens, but never played. Did he get dropped? Yeah. Damn. But now he's quickly moving up in the uh, WWE. All right, I forgot he was in that. Yeah. But nonetheless, let's move on from my high school, since I'm just doxing myself. Um, <laughs> this, this is funny as fuck. Teddy Bridgewater uh, is the backup for the Lions this year. He will be wearing the number 50. Such a weird quarterback number. Yeah. Well, it's not a quarterback number because quarterback number is 0 through 19. It's the only numbers that are allowed by the league for a quarterback. But every one of those numbers is either already taken or is a retired number for the Lions. Like in high school, when you go to get like your jersey and for baseball and Oh, like you're the last one there, so you have to get 99 or like 68 or something like that. Yeah, it's just the weirdest fucking number. Yeah, it was like, it, like now if, step if on the he field. sees the field, dude, and you see that number 50 at quarterback. The announcers are gonna have a field day. He's gonna look real slow with that number. 50 is a slow number. Now stepping on the field, quarterback Tay Bridgewater, number 50. Yeah, that's crazy, uh, but. That's going to do it for the NFL news. Let's talk our best performers of preseason week one. Colin, I'm going to let you start it off. All right, I'm going to go safety from the Cincinnati Bengals, Tyson Anderson. He was a third-round pick in the 2022 draft. And let's just say the safety spot for the Bengals is like a tough tough subject to talk about because they lost both their starters in Von Bell and Jesse Bates. This first game, he had two picks. One of them, he showed off a 4.36 speed. He stripped a fumble away from tight end Tucker Craft. So, and 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 he came back from a, a year-long injury. But he's showing signs that they can have a real stud at the safety spot. Yeah. This like, year. They've already got Dax Hill who's going to be yeah. huge for him at safety. So just adding this is phenomenal. Yeah. A guy nobody knew. And he came yeah. out first preseason with two picks, but the speed is what? 4.36. Yeah. Crazy. That is insane. Certainly. Like you, you, you can see that at the, uh, what is it? The DB, DB spot, but usually safeties are a little bit, a little bit slower. Sometimes. Not this guy. Just depends. But my first guy, Emmanuel Wilson, running back okay. for the Packers. He's okay. a rookie out of Fort Valley State College. Hell yeah. He was undrafted, got picked up by the Broncos, and then got released three days later. And he went off for the Packers against the Bengals. Only six carries. He put up 111 rushing yards, two touchdowns, which included an 80-yard touchdown. And the guy's got quite the story of just getting to the league. His college career started at Division II Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hell yeah. After his freshman year, he was awarded the CIAA Offensive Rookie of the Year. Then he transferred to another D2 school in Fort Valley State University in Fort Valley, Georgia. He goes undrafted and now is going crazy in this preseason game. What a what a what a way to get up there. Too bad there's really no place for him on the Packers. I, I mean, they could move they could find a way to move into a special teams to start out with. Yeah. He still he can still find a way on that fifty three man roster. Yeah, we'll see. But or maybe, you know, somebody will be interested and the Packers might drop him. Somebody'll yeah. pick him up. But nonetheless, yeah. when you do something like this, I think it guarantees you a spot. Yeah. So All right. pretty great stuff, Emmanuel Wilson. My next guy, I'm going DTR. Dorian Thompson Robinson. He's my next guy as well. Actually? Yeah. 
Yeah. Two games. Wow. Yeah. Like, in two games, he has 231 total yards. Two touchdowns. You got a grade from uh, PFF. Um, 90.2. And a passer rating of 134.9. He was a steal in the fifth round for the Browns. Yeah. And just this last game, um, he was 9 for 10 on completions. He had two red zone trips on his two drives. One touchdown, one that ended in a field goal. Yeah. No, he's so, killing it. 9 for 10, 102, touchdown. Not, that, that Hall of Fame game, he looked really good. Yeah. It, it looks like he's sure fire for that backup spot behind Deshaun Watson. Yeah. I mean... And again, I don't, I don't know if I want to be behind Deshaun Watson. Yeah. There's been some people that have been behind him before. Yeah. Just but, like, who's their back? Who's their backup right now? Uh, Did Dobbs? Did yeah, Dobbs? I, th- I think Dobbs is the backup. Dobbs Dobbs needs to hang it up. Like he's he can't even land a, a solid backup spot. Yeah. Like we've seen small we've seen some bright, bits. Yeah. yeah. Those games where he was starting for Tennessee. Isn't he like an astrophysicist? Like, he could be doing something he, else. No, literally, he could be working at NASA. Yeah. But he wants to play in the NFL. Yeah. Um, Josh, go ahead and take that NASA job. Yeah. You'll probably get paid more. Uh, maybe. But, like... I, I, I can't think he gets paid that much. Um... Well, shit, he's an NFL player. We can look it up. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, Dorian Thompson Robinson looked absolutely insanely good. Um, pretty happy for him. Josh Dobbs getting paid a mil a year. Yeah, I don't know if NASA's beating that. Depends. Depends. Uh, yeah, it depends on <laughs> what he's doing. But I don't think NASA's throwing out mil. Who knows? I'll go be an astronaut. Okay. Well, since you took my second guy, I'm going to go ahead and say my third uh, okay. and final. Uh, it's a rookie for the Chargers out of TCU. No, no. But it's not Quentin Johnston. <laughs> I know who it and is. And it's not Max Duggan. It's Darius Davis. Oh. Did you take him too? No. Oh. I don't know why I was freaking out. I, I have another rookie from the Chargers. Oh, okay. Uh, well, he was a fourth-round pick. Mainly taken for his punt and kick return skills, and he certainly showed him off. Two returns got called back due to penalties. He goes out for the third one, and he takes it 81 yards to the house. Damn. He also had two catches for 21 yards. The only thing that I saw that wasn't great was his blocking on run plays. Uh, yeah. At five foot eight, 165, don't expect that to be good, personally. Um, not really, you know, a physical monster out there, but nonetheless, shout out Darius Davis for the kick return. Yeah. I mean, dude, his, his speed and elusiveness, bro, he reminded me so much of Darren, uh, Darren Sproles on that kick or on that return. Yeah. So much. Yeah. All right. So you want my rookie from the chargers? Yeah, let's hear it. Elijah Dotson. Yep. One of three running backs to play play this game for the Chargers. It was him, Joshua Kelly, and Isaiah Spiller. He's an undrafted free agent. Six. He all right. So here we go. First game. Six carries for ninety two yards and two touchdowns. The biggest thing is the six carries for ninety two yards. Yeah, that's wild. And he's not a big guy. Two. He's small. He's fast but he still runs with power. Yeah. Um, so, and right now, if he keeps this up, he could be the next guy behind Austin Eckler. I think he might start in a special teams role, but he's fast, shows a lot of strength, but I, I would not be surprised if he was added to the 53-man roster after preseason. I like it. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic performance. You got but- any honorable mentions you want to throw out? I don't. Uh, that first guy you picked, I'm, I'm blanking on his name, but he was going to be my honorable mention. Tyson Anderson? Yeah. 
All right. What about uh? Did you watch uh, the Tampa Tampa game at all? I'm gonna be honest. I've only watched like two or three of the games. They, like so, I I wrote down some honorable mentions. I'm just gonna throw out that had really good games. All right. Aiden O'Connell for the Raiders. Yeah. Jason, uh, I'm gonna say Pinock safety for the Giants. Yeah, it's something like that. Malik Willis. Yeah. For Tennessee. He had a decent day. Baker Mayfield. Who showed what who should be QB one, and then Stetson Bennett. Yeah, I was gonna put Stetson. He had a fantastic day. He looked like the best rookie quarterback out there. Yeah, it's getting to the point where it's like maybe he's, he's his, actually gonna like replace Matt Stafford when it's all said and done. I told you, did I not tell you? You did, and I I wanted to not believe it. Bro, he's in his prime right now. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I I guess he is. At <laughs> twenty five for this yeah. moment, he was made for it. Twenty five year old rookie. But yeah, no. So those are just some guys who had a phenomenal week one. Yeah, Dorian Thompson Robinson had has had two great games. That I really liked the potential that we're seeing from him. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm super happy and. The best part about week two, though, is when we start seeing starters. I believe the yeah. Falcons are throwing out the starting offense to start the game. Yeah, we need to see Bijan. I want to yeah, see him. And, before and we week will. One. We will see Bijan this weekend. They already confirmed that. We'll see Desmond Ritter. So we should be seeing first team offense, first team defense, at least for the first quarter, maybe the first half. Yeah. Uh, I really want to see. I really want to see the uh, the defense. Yeah. we've added so many players, I want to see like how we're feeling. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Uh, but we got a bunch of preseason going on this next week. So we've got one game Thursday, Browns-Eagles. And then Friday, Bengals-Falcons and Panthers-Giants. Saturday, just about everybody's playing. And then Sunday, we got Saints-Chargers. And Monday, on ESPN, Ravens-Commanders. And that will be week two. And once again, we'll do a little recap next week. But let's get into some college talk. Big Ten preview. You know we had, you know we did the SEC, the ACC, the Pac-12. It's about time we break down this Big Ten. Yeah, and and then we'll hit the Big Twelve next. But the Big Ten is a little weird this year. Yeah. (laughs) Um. I got to say this was the hardest standings to put together because people could yeah. literally be anywhere on this list. Yeah, and I was like looking at the east side too. Yeah, yeah, no, like the east like after Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, those three you can put kind of whatever order, really Ohio ah. State and Michigan you can put whatever order. But I think Penn State is certainly 3. And after that those next four teams, there's no telling. It sounds like you're sleeping on a team right now. I'm sleeping on Maryland is what you're saying. Yes. I know. And I'm they not really because some... they're at four. <laughs> but... they... Yeah, the, I mean, I, I have them at four too. Yeah. But they got some They got some guys this year. They've got one particular guy. Nah, but they also got some disgusting wide receivers. Fair. They, they certainly do. Uh, so let's just go ahead and hop in to the standings prediction. The East. All right. Go ahead and get Michigan, it started. List Michigan. off your full. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No, go ahead. All right. One, so I'm just going to top to bottom. Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Maryland, Michigan State, Rutgers, Indiana. Okay. Mine's relatively similar. I have Ohio State winning the division. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I have Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Maryland, Michigan State, Indiana, Rutgers. Yeah. So we what we had Michigan and Ohio State flipped, and then we had Rutgers and Indiana flipped. Yeah. Yeah. So it's honestly something you you we won't know until they start playing. Yep. Exactly. With Ohio State, Michigan, the thing is like, is Michigan really gonna beat them again? Like, can they do it again? (laughs) I, because what? Who's Ohio State's quarterback right now? I, it's going to be Kyle him. McCord. Yeah, are we that high on him? I like him. coming 
to come in and fill the shoes of C.J. Stroud? I don't know about that, but he's certainly got the guys around him to do it. I was about to say, throwing it, all he has to do is just throw it up in the air. Either Marvin Harrison or Ibuka is going to come down with it. Yeah, exactly. He's got some targets. That's that's the we'll biggest talk, thing for him. We'll talk about those two later. We definitely will, and they might be the first two we talk about. <laughs> I got a good feeling that they will be. <laughs> yeah, but let's talk about the West. I'm going to go ahead and do my standings first, but okay. this one is it just a, it's a toss-up all around. I just want to take him out of the, the Big Ten. Yeah. Okay. I And honestly, I could be entirely wrong. This could literally be backwards yep. for the most part. And just list it. I went Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Illinois, Purdue, Northwestern. You were so close to just listing my list. Really? <laughs> I, went, I went Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, Nebraska, Purdue, Northwestern. All right. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better about my list. That ours were yeah. pretty similar. I think it's pretty obvious that Wisconsin and Iowa will be the top two in the West. Yeah. The only problem with Iowa is that there is no telling what their offense is really going to be. Yeah. They're going to be relying on their defense this year. They got really good secondaries and some linebackers that yeah. can really hold it down. So as long as their offense, I'd say, there's going to be a lot of games where it's going to be like 14 to 10. Yeah, that's wins. fair. Stuff like that. Against teams like Purdue and Northwestern, which is going to look really bad. It definitely. <laughs> uh, but let's talk which teams will be ranked and where. Uh, I think, obviously, off the top, Ohio State and Michigan are easily top six, maybe top four. Yeah, I, I, got, I, I got it right here. Ohio State and Michigan, top five. That's yeah. just what I put. Yeah. That's probably where they're going to be. I got Penn State top 10. Agreed. Uh, I think the problem, like, they're always going to end up pretty high because they're always just going to have two losses, and it's Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Like, they're going to win everything else besides. Yeah, Yeah, they'll beat everybody except Ohio State and Michigan, and they'll just, like, kind of sneak into, like, that, like, 13 to, to, like, 8 or 7 range. Also, Braves just won, by the way. Yes, Braves win. Get fucked, Luke. <laughs> uh, but I think Wisconsin could be like a 25 to 17. Yeah. So right here, I I got Wisconsin, Iowa, and Maryland all have potential to be anywhere between 20 to 25. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of in the same boat. I have Wisconsin maybe pushing a little higher than the than Iowa and Maryland, but I have Iowa and Maryland is like twenty five to twenty at best. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'm I'm right. I think Mar- Maryland will be outside that just because they have to play teams like Michigan, Ohio yeah. State, and Penn State. Yeah, they're in the like much that, more that, loaded that, side of the of yeah. the conference. Yeah, you put Maryland on the west side. I think they're making that championship oh, almost every year. Yeah, that's fair, uh, but. Who makes the college football playoff? Ohio State, Michigan, only two options. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the the, players, though. The only way Penn State can get it is if they beat Ohio State and Michigan. True. Uh, But let's talk about the players. We'll start with the quarterbacks. It kind of pains me to say this, but I guess J.J. McCarthy's won just because C.J. Stroud's gone. Yeah. So I'll I'll list my, my three right now, and I got... Actually, I'll just go J.J. McCarthy one. I I forget we do like that order so we don't spoil any answers. Yeah. So with J.J. McCarthy, I I have never once watched him play and been like, wow, this guy's a really good quarterback. Yeah. It's it's because Michigan's really relied on the running game. Yeah, and their running game is fantastic. We'll talk about it. It's just, there's just something about it. It doesn't seem like he steps up whenever he has to throw the ball. He's never good. He it, it's like he's scared to throw the ball because he's he's a much more mobile quarterback. Yeah, he likes to run a lot, and so the way I look at it is like every time he's got to pass a deep ball, he looks scared, like he's hesitant. Yep, and he doesn't trust his arm to get it there. That's yeah. why we we haven't really seen many great wide receivers come out of Michigan, but that's like what it's been a while since they've had a good quarterback come out of Michigan. 
Oh yeah, uh, Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just I I kind of feel like he's just not the guy. But at the same time, like a bunch of guys graduated, a bunch of guys transferred out of this conference, and he's just kind of left there as the guy with the the best experience. Yeah, and Michigan improved their O line this year, so I think that's what I like put like pushed me to take him one is that he should have better pocket like less pocket pressure yeah this year yep uh but number two i've got talia tagovailo yes sir okay yes sir i bid on it look i think he's good um i don't think he's as good as his brother not yet okay maybe not yet but i i think in college two has got him yeah but but i think talia will get to the nfl and I think he will be better than two in the NFL. Okay. That's that's bold. I, I almost wanted to take that as my stake your claim, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I look, he could certainly be great. I just got that blood in him. I don't know, yeah. man. I really don't. All right. Well, I'm curious who you got at three, because it seems like there was like three or four quarterbacks that you could take at three. There is. Um and I decided on a transfer. Okay. I went for Tanner Mordecai of Wisconsin, transferred from SMU. I love what this guy offers. I love him. Okay. So I like that. Yeah. I I, I think they've got a, a pretty solid team here and new head coach. I'm I'm very excited for what Wisconsin offers this year. Yeah. I took Drew Aller, I think is how you pronounce his last name. From Penn is Penn State's quarterback. Just I was I was between him and uh, Ohio State's QB. Yeah, really. When I was looking at it, but I just haven't seen much of uh, what'd you say, McCord? Yeah, Kyle McCord. Kyle McCord. I haven't seen that much of him. Yeah, that, is, he, that's is he a fair. freshman? Uh, he, uh, I think he's a red shirt freshman or red shirt sophomore. Um, I think he has like one start. Okay. And he's he's pretty good. I I think he'll end up being probably on this list by the end of this season. Yeah. But with not seeing him, it's kind of hard to put him up there. Yeah. I don't know. I like I like what Drew's cooking over in uh Penn State. Yeah. So, I think if anybody can help Penn State overcome Michigan and Ohio State, I think it's him. Yeah. So, we'll see. All right. Well, let's talk running backs. Blake Corum. Blake <laughs> it's so easy. Like it's he's a monster. No doubt without a question. Yeah. Blake Corum's absolutely crazy. Like I think he had over a thousand rushing yards last year and he didn't even play he the didn't full even, season. I was say he didn't even play half the season. Yeah, he did. He played like but all like, the way up until like the very end. And he had yeah, fourteen hundred rushing yards. Yeah. And eighteen touchdowns. So whack. Yeah, he's a fucking monster. Who you got it to? I got Braylon Allen of Wisconsin. Dang. Okay, okay. Okay, so I think we're on the same page with who's yep. three then? I'm curious who you got. Okay. But let's talk about Braylon Allen first. Don't want to just look over him. Yeah. Fantastic player. 1,200 rushing yards, 11 touchdowns. Great. And he's going to be a huge part of this Wisconsin offense. Um, yeah, I mean, he can be pretty effective in the receiving game as well. He only had 13 receptions last year, but 104 yards on those 13 receptions. I think he'll be a great weapon for Tanner Mordecai. I think just in the run game itself, he'll be fantastic at getting them in position for Tanner Mordecai to make plays. And I really think he could be just yet another great Wisconsin running back. Yeah, I, I like that. Who's your next? Who's three? So I took Donovan Edwards. Me too. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Look, Just, I, I know he's the backup, technically. He's got a split time with him. He's so like, fucking he's, good. He's too good not to be on the field. Yeah. And listen, if they would have told him that he wasn't going to play that much, 
he would be somewhere else. Yeah. But last season, he still had 140 carries, 991 yards, seven touchdowns, 18 receptions for 200 yards. Like, Dude, we're just going to put him in the slot and have Blake Corum. Yeah. He's six one. He could play wide receiver. Dude, a six one running back. It's crazy. He's a is, fucking beast. That is insane. Yeah. So, yeah, I I think that's. I think we. I'm glad that we're agreeing here. Yeah, I mean it's it's like so we talked about earlier. Like Michigan's known for their run game. Yeah. So you got to have their two running backs on here. Fair enough. Uh, well, let's talk wide receiver because the other I, dynamic duo. Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. Obviously number one. And Emeka Egbuka. Yes, Emeka Egbuka, number two. Uh, yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. was the easiest pick of all time for number one. Uh, best wide receiver in the nation. Yep. Seventy-seven receptions, twelve hundred yards, fourteen touchdowns last year. Just an absolute baller. And yep. then. And that just just literally off of that one catch he had where his mm-hmm. like both of his feet were out of bounds and he just shot his right foot in bounds and got the catch. Yeah. That that's was enough. Insane. <laughs> and Bro, then him and Egbuka are gonna literally be top ten picks this in this year's draft. Yeah, and Egbuka got just about the same amount of receptions last year. He had seventy four for one thousand one hundred and fifty one ten touchdowns. Like these two guys together is absolutely fucking insane. Yeah, that's why you don't need a running back. Yeah. Just throw because you have options to throw to. Exactly. There it's it's absolutely crazy. But there's a lot of options for number three. And I'm interested to see who you picked. I got Tyrese Chambers. Okay. From Maryland. Yeah, it's not a bad pick. I like him because mainly because he's gonna be Talia's guy this year. Yeah. So he is going to light up the Big Ten. I like it. I don't. I don't think there's many DBs that can that can trap him. Fair enough. I'll talk. I'll talk about one later, though. Interesting. But my third guy, it's Chamir. I think it's DK or Deke um, of Wisconsin. D- I don't think he was like the starter last year. He only had 47 receptions. 689 yards last year, six touchdowns. He's going to be Tanner Mordecai's number one guy this season. And like I said, kind of with Braylon Allen, these three together are going to be so good. Yeah. I mean, because you, you don't know. Because is, uh, is Mordecai a mobile? Is he mobile quarterback? A little bit. Um, But really, like, he, he's just a, a very skilled passer. Like, last season... He had 3,500 passing yards, 33 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, Rushing-wise, let me let me look at the numbers. Uh, rushing, 59 carries, 100 yards. Not really a rushing quarterback, but can certainly move. Yeah. I, don't know, I like that. I like that pick. Yeah, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's got some dudes this year. They do, man. That's why. That's why they're gonna win the East or the West. The West. I was about to say they they ain't winning the East. Yeah, even if they were in it, they aren't. Uh, but let's talk defense. Who you got number one? I'm gonna butcher his last name. Okay. Yep, I know who it is. <laughs> okay. You do you know his last name? I I don't. So, J T. J T. I'm just gonna call him. Yeah, I'll give it Defensive a shot. End. JT Tui Maloa. That's probably you. Probably just killed it. Maybe he's not but my number one though. Just defensive end from Ohio State. Yeah, he's insanely good. Monster, monster. Yeah, that's all I'm, that's all I'm gonna say. Who you got? Uh, I've got Tommy Eichenberg, the linebacker from Ohio State. He, Tommy's my number two. Yeah, and JT's my number two. Okay. So. It, Ohio just, State, it, it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> really, really good fucking defense. Really good. So Yeah. They're they're gonna be so fucking good on defense, and that's the advantage they have over Michigan. Yeah. Cause what? Those are gonna be their two captains, right? Probably. For defense. I would assume. So but if you like so 
Tommy Tommy Blitz on one side, and then you got JT on the other side. JJ McCarthy's not going fucking anywhere. Yeah, that's fair. But who you got at three? I've got defensive back Cooper DeJean from Iowa. Fuck. That that that's mine. Really? I, I, I have to. <laughs> Did I like this kid? Five interceptions last year? Fucking crazy. I said. I said that there was one DB that could lock up Tyrese Chambers. Yeah. It's him. Yeah, it was insane. 75 total tackles last year, the five interceptions, three touchdowns off those five interceptions. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's uh, shout out a, the white boy at defensive back. I was about to say. He's he's crazy. Yeah. He 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 locks people up. Oh. His yeah. footwork is so good too. Yeah, he's and insane. He, he, he's really good on the go routes. I was watching some some clips like not many people can get by him yeah he is very good and it's going to be a big part of iowa's defensive success this year yeah. too bad their offense is going to suck yeah they'll they'll combine for like 14, 14 yeah points. yeah it'll be tough he'll probably account for majority of their touchdowns <laughs> But, that would be so bad if he leads their team in touchdowns and he's a corner. Yeah, that would be brutal. But I think that's going to do it for the Big Ten. Let's hop in yeah. and stake your claim. Did you have any closing statements for the Big Ten? I mean, it's just going gonna, gonna to be an, an, an interesting year. Yeah. Mainly because you got three teams in the East that can basically fight for that number one spot. Like, I would not count Penn State out this year. Usually, no. like last year, we could just because C.J. Stroud – and Ohio State was just so overpowering. But Penn State is an actual force to be reckoned with this year. Yeah, they're going to be very good. Yeah. So, yeah, but watch out for the Big Ten because next year it's going to look a little different. USC, yeah. UCLA joining next year, and then the year after that, Oregon and Washington. So here's the thing. What side do they go to? They're on the west, and I think they'll push one of the teams over in into the east or they might go away they might get rid of divisions and just do just straight up yeah okay i think that would be better yeah i think it would too you can't have i think that's just gonna be the standard now yeah you think they do that with the sec anytime soon i think they already are gonna i think that's kind of the plan once texas and oklahoma and oh really i I didn't see that i think so I thought it was. I thought that. Cause I thought they were going to the west. No, I think they just were like, nah, fuck them. All right, I'm down for that. Yeah, me too. Um, all right, it's gonna stake your claim. Okay, I'm gonna let you. I, I'm gonna let you get it off. So it's it's kind of a bold one this year, and I'm just gonna throw it out. And it's, it's going to be a tough ride for all my ATL, my Atlanta Braves people. But they're not winning the World Series this year. The Baltimore Orioles will win the World Series, and Adley Rushman will be your World Series MVP. Wow. That's crazy. I, it turning, was very tough. Turning on the boys. It's crazy. It, I just, it's hard. Man, like, because I thought of it, I really didn't want to say this, but I was like, I'm thinking, trying to find like a stake your claim that I truly believe in. And I believe in those get those kids over in Baltimore. All right. Hey, that's fair enough. I'm, I'm going to stick with the AL East. All right. Tampa Bay Rays will have a first round exit in the playoffs. I like it. Right now, they're, they're they'd be playing. Apart. Yeah, look, okay, right now, they'd be slated to play the Astros. And I think they have no chance against the Astros. Especially with Verlander back. Yeah, McClanahan's down. He's gone for the season. There's no no idea what's happening with Wander. Yeah. And can you really trust Tyler Glasnow to be like a number one starter at this point? As of right now, I'd probably trust Aaron Savali more than yeah. uh, Tyler Glasnow. But then again, Savali doesn't have all that much playoff experience. Exactly. And there's so many things going on with this team at the moment. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't see them 
getting far, and especially if they if they match up with the Astros, they're it's fucked. Wraps. It's wrapped. Astros have too much playoff experience. Yeah. Oh they've, yeah. They've been there. They've done that. They know how to. They know what it takes to win. Definitely. You let so, yeah. Jose Altuve kick into postseason mode, and you're fucked. <laughs> so that that is my prediction. The Rays will have a first round exit in the playoffs. I like that we both went the baseball route. Yeah. Today. Yeah. But we got a lot to look forward to. Not this weekend, but next weekend, the 26th, week zero. College yes. football. Yes. Um, we got Navy, Notre Dame in Ireland, I believe. That's a crazy that's that, that, that they're playing over in Ireland. Yeah, that is a little weird. Uh, and then USC, San Jose State. Interesting. At 8 p.m. on the Pac-12 network. Interesting. <laughs> but we're getting there, man. We're almost over the hump. We we're almost there. Yep. It's I cannot wait when we have MLB, NFL, and college football, all games to talk about. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be thrilling. These episodes are gonna go so much longer. Ah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. We certainly will. We'll be talking to you for about four hours. <laughs> Hopefully not. We, went, we got we other went. things to deal with. But we will see you. Well, I will see you on Friday. Colin, you'll see them next week. I will see you next week. Peace. Later.